Second Kings chapter twenty verse one. Sorry. This is the reading. This time Hezekiah was uh, sick and near death. And uh, Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, went to him and said to him, Thus says the Lord, that set your house in order, for you shall die and not live. Then he turned his face toward the wall and prayed to the Lord, saying, O Jehovah, I plead with you. Remember how, O Lord, I have walked before you in truth and in all loyal heart. That I have done what was good in your sight. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. And it happened before Isaiah had gone into the middle of the court that the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Return and tell Hezekiah, the leader of your people, that, and that is the leader of my people. This is what the Lord, the God of David, your father, said. I have heard your prayer. By that day, you shall go up to the house of the Lord. And I will add to your days 15 years. And I will deliver you and the city from the hand of the king of Assyria. And I will defend this city for my own sake and for the sake of my servant David. Therefore Isaiah said, take a lump of a fix so they took and laid it on the, on the boy and he recovered. Luke chapter 13 I'll stop my reading from verse 6. The book of Luke chapter 6 verse, verse 13 verse, chapter 13 verse 6 says and he spoke this parable. A certain man had a fig tree and planted in his vineyard and he came seeking fruit on, the, on it and found none. Then he said to the keeper of the vineyard, Look for three years I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. Why does he use up the ground? But he answered and said to him, Sir, let it alone this year also until I dig around it and fertilize it. And if it bears fruit well, but if it after that you can cut it down. May God lead us in his reading. Where we read from in the book of Luke, this is where we've read and also discussed before now. The topic of our discussion that time was practicing the word of God in the sight of man and the sight of God. 
The one we are going to listen to today, the topic of our discussion is God will never do anything until he told it to his people. Do you hear that? God, God will never do a thing until he makes his people to know it. Is the topic of our discussion today. Where we read from and we've also discussed in the book of Luke. We heard about a fig tree that refused to bring up fruit. And how the owner of that vineyard came to seek us fruit on it and did not find find anyone for three years. And he gave another for it to be cut down. Until then, the, the, the vine dresser now pleaded on behalf of the fig tree. And they gave another extra year to the vine uh, to the fig tree to bear fruit. And it was an agreement between the owner of that vineyard and also the vine dresser that if I try as much as I can on it and it didn't bring fruit, after one year you can cut it down. But, but here we are telling ourselves that what that person is going to do after one year is, uh, is brought to notice of the people before he's going, he will do that. When we were speaking here at that time, it was like a play. But it has started in our midst now. That people have started, uh, but God has started calling people home from among us. About three or four days back, or six years back. We have not been experiencing, experiencing death among us like this. That I look at those years as a very cool evening time that everything is so cool. But the time that we always uh, uh, go around does not stop at 6 o'clock always. That that time that could either be the 6 o'clock in the morning or evening that you uh, have a cool temperature that time, a time will come that will be 12 o'clock. Because the time work clock is actually rotating. And when it's 12 o'clock in the afternoon, they will always say that the sun has set. It's a time that the body will be hot. And some people will be saying that they are tired of the heat. 12 o'clock is not always comfortable for the flesh. And we are telling ourselves that they have mentioned to us already that that this vine dresser had already pleaded for Nabihai before the beginning of the year. They have also pleaded in order for us to leave this particular day. In order for our doing to be turned to that of God. In order for God to see good fruit in us and also be glad with us. This is one thing that God has created us for. It's for us to give him glory 
glory. If you do things that pleases God, it means you are honoring Him. Even the little children also understand what I'm saying. But those who actually go to Catholic Church, if you ask the little one who created you, the person will say, God, and He said, uh, He created it for. He created me for me to give him glory. That, that is what God has created man for, to give him glory. And that is what we say fruit here. If you obey God and you run away from unrighteous things, it means you are honoring him. But if you become a man of your own, the Igala people say they will say and you will refuse to listen to you are somebody that believes in yourself that you don't want to do according to the will of God or what the word of God says but according to your own mindset just as it was in the mind of the of, uh, fig, uh, divine the vine owner for that particular vine to bring up fruit, but it was in the mind of the vine itself to not bring fruit. If him that has the vine tree and even the vine dresser, both of them had an agreement at the end. And that is to say, till next year, give me time. If it doesn't bring fruit, and then what you said should happen to it, let them cut it down. But if it begins to bring up fruit, are they going to cut it down? Is it not because they refuse to bring up fruit, they want to cut it down? For that reason, let us bear the fruit of repentance. That repentance is not hidden. If a man says he has repented, whatever he has repented for will be visible for men to see. But today, it, it, uh, it turns another leaf. This man is the king of Judah and he was sick. His name is Hezekiah. And this sickness made God to send Isaiah to him. The topic of our discussion today is God will not do it until he notifies his people. He sent to Hezekiah and he said, Do you see this? I want to take him one or where? If I had known that God would come and take me for this bread now, I would have prepared myself. He doesn't want that to be the response of Hezekiah. And that was why he sent to him that this sickness. Do you see the do you know the sickness we are talking about? It's not uh, a very serious ailment. His boy. And that was why they sent to him. It's not that he was hospitalized or his malaria is so high or typhoid so high. It's just a boy. And they sent to him that you are not going to recover from this ailment. He was so angry. That what God sent to him is different. I said, why? It's for him to be prepared. Since he is notified, he can prepare himself before he goes back home. But he refused. He, he faced the world. 
on his bed and he started crying and he has started mentioning the good thing he has done for God and how he has been faithfully serving God from his beginning down to that particular moment and he said so you, you want to take me from this earth now I don't want to die yet but the word of God standard sure that, that if it wants to happen he will notify his people that he is going to do this thing and he has told him already but he refused to accept it and since he prayed and also pleaded God took pity on him before Isaiah could walk out of the court the word of the, of, of the Lord came to him again that go back to Hezekiah that his crying I have seen his tears I have also heard his prayer go and tell him that next tomorrow he is going to go into the house of God and thank him and he has also added 15 years more to his ear he didn't send to him that he was not going to die again but I have added another 15 years to your years that they are going to use uh, a very tender uh, fig tree and, and place it on that wound it will go and that was how Isaiah went and delivered the message to him and they took the fig tree and, and also healed him and the Bible says he recovered when he recovered if you begin to read down I'm not going to read again because of our time if you go home read more when he became well that what God sent to him he, ref he forgot it that instead of him to gather himself prepare his way concerning the message of God he started spreading his wings and that was when we heard that he gave birth to a son Manasa. the name is Manasseh that when he uh, Hezekiah died he saw Manasseh was 12 years and he started ruling the Bible said among all the kings of the Jews or the people of Judah sorry he was the worst king that while Hezekiah was actually spreading his tentacle, that was when that child came out. And he was the worst king of Judah. There is no good thing that we receive from there again. And that was not the only case. When he was well again, other kings from other nations came to greet him and they said, Sorry for your sickness. Thank, uh, thank God oh, you are well. Do you know what he did? He took them alongside. It, instead of him to prepare himself, he started uh, raising his shoulders. And he started showing his, men, uh, his enemies the precious things in the house of God. Uh, and God still sent the message through Isaiah to him that do you see this thing you have done 
All these things that you showed to the visitor that came to see you, they themselves will come back and conquer you and take all that is in the house of God. Do you know what this man said? He said, if I have peace in my time, no problem. He should have gone 15 years ago. But he refused. And he refused to prepare himself, to gather himself. And it has come to you and I today. And we say, the word of God has been telling us that this place is not our home and we will live here very soon that the place they have given to you and that we are supposed to prepare to go is heaven and that word of God is true and it will surely come to pass and it will happen one day but you don't know the day and he has sent to us in order for each and every one of us to be prepared never to be slumbered it is time to wake up it is not time to sleep if they have been speaking to us gently before now that this that has happened among us should awaken us from our slumber that God has sent to us to prepare our ways each and every one of us should prepare our way if, if there were anything concerning our brother that, that went that he did not prepare he can't reconcile those things anymore but since you and I have been sent to today that we should prepare our way the person that will come will come very soon and it will, he won't waste time if we didn't understand that message verbally we will Sunday, we've seen the practical expression of it. Uh, br brother, prepare your way. Sister, prepare your way. When it happens, you will be silent. You will know nothing else to do. If by that time they say, yeah, let this thing be, it will only be like I can regret or something, it can never happen again. Do you still remember the, the, the word we heard about the, the fig tree that we discussed here? There are so many among us that the word of God actually touched. It's not a hidden thing. They hastily came and reconciled their way. Do you hear that? They hastily came and they reconciled their way. And it is within you, it is in you. And the one in you is one that do, is worse than that of those that came out and reconciled themselves. And you are still seated here. And you also commune today again. Yes, no problem. God is a God of mercy. But that this morning, this particular hour, 15 minutes to the, to 12 o'clock, he has sent to you again. That you should gather yourself. Because your time of living here is fast approaching. When they say they added 15 years to Hezekiah, you say that as a very uh, long time. But in the sight of God, 
One thousand years is like a day in his sight. And one time, uh, one year can be like one thousand years in his eyes. That if you refuse to come out and reconcile yourself, one day before God concerning you can be like one thousand years that He has given you. That it, uh, uh, the, it's not that the word of God is telling lie. What we are saying. What the word of God is telling you this morning. You also know that it is not that you are supposed to reconcile your way. That you are supposed to confess yourself before God and also the brethren. So that when you see your surrounding, you see yourself around, you will discover that when the call is put out, you will go home. But your hardened heart will not allow you. And that is the problem you have. In the book of Psalm, <laughs> the word of God said that uh, the guilt of a bad man in his eyes, in his mind, is justifying himself. Okay, he's actually talking or rebuking the person in his mind that the fear of God is not in you. You are not afraid of God at all. That the only problem you have is for people to hear that this is a sin you've committed. But the fear of God is not in you. That if you have the fear of God, you have admitted to God that this is what I've done against you. There is this uh, deceitful word of God that we always preach to ourselves. That that the Lord, the grace of God abounds. It's too much. That the, the grace of God covered whatever sin the person has committed before he was given birth to and even while he was alive. Eh. Yeah. Is that so? Yeah, you really have the knowledge of God or the word of God. If it is like that, where did you keep confession that the book of God made mention of? The grace of God is there actually. But it's not available to a man who refused to confess. It is when you admit that you've done wrong before the Lord that He will forgive you. Paul said uh, uh, that the word, the grace of God abounds. Should we continue and see so that the grace of God will abound? What was his answer? What did he say? He said, God forbid. The grace of God stands. And he forgives. But it's only available to anyone who comes to confess. Don't be deceived. God cannot be mocked. Whatever a man has sown, that he will reap. We are seeing the picture of Hezekiah here. They sent a message to him. And we made ourselves to understand that that particular word has also been, uh, that message has been sent to us theoretically and practically. And we heard it. Didn't we hear it? We heard it. If we've not really heard the one that was spoken to us, the one that has happened is obvious. That each and every one of us should prepare our ways. 
There is a place we were this morning in the book of James, uh, chapter 5, verse 16 or 17. They say, Confess your sin to one another in order for your sins, uh, for your sicknesses, for you to be healed. That's true. Is there no uh, grace there? Yeah? Why did they have to speak about confession there? Yeah? Confess your sins to one another. For your for you to be healed of your sicknesses. And you want your sin to be healed uh, for you to be healed. But you've refused to live the life of confession. You want the headache that is in you to go. But you refuse to take paracetamol. Well, practicing the word of God in the sight of God and sight of man is what we've discussed before now. But the word we are listening today to is that God will never do a thing until he has notified his people. If that of Christian the words concerning Christians is so hard like this. Uh, and it has become mandatory for you to confess your sin before you are forgiven. That means you who has not believed in Christ who is seated here this morning, you've been coming to this church for a very long time and you've refused to believe in the Lord Jesus. And it is not that you dislike the word of God and it is not that you refuse or you don't want to go to heaven. Accept and believe you just sat on it. And this message is for you also that prepare your way the Lord is fast approaching. Prepare your way. You don't know when he will come. When we left ourselves, uh, fr- when we dispersed from here the other day, we also shook hands with our, our brother that left us and also hugged each other before he left and went. But the following week, he could no longer come here again. Why in your own eyes, who is here listening this morning, that throughout this year, this year you will come to this uh, assembly that the desires of man does not always come to pass in his life the world is best for you come to the side of repentance come to the side that has, that has salvation and that is by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ the son of God confess your sins to him accept that he died for you make him your Lord and your Savior that means you have come to the good side of God and that is where he will see you well and that is where what we are saying here will become your part if, if you refuse to believe you will go to hell and God has not hidden that from us just as our topic said that God does not do, do a thing without notifying his people since he loves you and never wants you to go to hell that was why he has sent to you that, that if you refuse to believe in his son Jesus Christ you will go to hell that when the angels rescued Lord and his children and wife he told them to run to the mountain because they were about to consume the city in, in order for them not to be consumed with the city even before he brought them out he already told them inside 
Before they even went to Sodom and Gomorrah, they told Abraham about it. On that to know that God can never be guilty of whatever he has to tell man. Whatever he wants to do, he will tell man before. If you refuse to do what he said, that is when you will enter into his condemnation. Don't be rebellious. Anywhere you see that you have shortcoming, since you don't know the morning to the evening, confess your sin. If it is not like that, the son that we sent 303 okay, yeah. will surely come to pass. When my time on earth elapses, and immediately it elapses, you are going to cross that pit of death. We are saying you don't know yet. Uh, maybe you have in your heart that when we come next week, you are going to listen to another. And while you are walking away from the assembly home, maybe you don't even know that the last step you are going to take will be the one that will take you from here, and the death is before you. Maybe your next step will be it will be the one that you take before the death. And you don't know. If they are telling you about what you have done wrong, you are still procrastinating. You don't want to confess. And you don't know that death is right before you. And the everlasting life day is done. No That we supposed to be a day of joy becomes a day of shame for you. Don't allow it to be like that. God can never be guilty of man. He has already warned us. He cannot do a thing until he has notified his people. He has also told us that we need to prepare because the hope, the, our heavenly world is fast approaching. As you're still alive, Reconcile your way. Prepare yourself. Maybe this is the last privilege you have of hearing this kind of word. There is one thing I always say. That when the time, when the word of God, which is like water, is staring that for you to actually take another step into it. That when your mates are running into it and are saved, and you refuse, when it becomes calm, you won't have the guts to enter anymore. And this is one thing you don't know. They are saying, you is known to you only. That is one thing that you think you know. But it's not like that. It's open. They know. But they just choose to ignore you. God is just waiting for you to say it so that you can be saved. Don't waste time. May God bless you as you are ready to help yourself.